Hey folks, this is Brendan and I am the creator of Vectorbox. So I'm just gonna give you a hopefully quick overview of how the script works. I've got After Effects open here. I've got version 2022 open, but this script should work in CS6 onwards. So let's just jump right in. The first thing I'm gonna do is build a box. So I've got the script open here, it's docked, and I'm gonna hit this box button. And that drops a default box into my composition. So I've got some parameters I can play with here. If I drag the width, you can see that's how that works depth, and height. Now you'll notice that these are adjusting from the center of the box. So I'm gonna reset these here. If you want to adjust from, let's say the bottom of the box, so that when I drag the height, it would only expand upwards instead of up and down. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if I go into the box here, the box comp, don't worry about how this looks. That's just the nature of how I got the anchor point to work but you can see the dimensions of this box comp are 100 by 100. So that's important because if we go back out here and we twirl down to see the anchor point, I just hit A on the keyboard, the anchor point is at 0, 0, 0. So if I want the anchor point to be at the bottom of the comp, and we know that the comp, the box comp is 100 by 100 by 100, before I do anything, I'm actually gonna turn on, I'm gonna do Command Shift H, to turn the bounding boxes back on. And I'm gonna zoom in here, and you can see the anchor point is currently in the very center of the box, but if I drag this down, you can see it's moving it downwards. And because I know for a fact that the comp, and it doesn't matter what these dimensions are set to, what matters is that the box composition itself is 100 by 100. So I'm gonna make this anchor point, set this anchor point's Y to 50 and that is the very bottom of the box. So we have it in the middle of the bottom face of the box. So now I'm gonna do shift forward slash to zoom back out. If I adjust the height, you can see it's expanding upwards now because the anchor point's at the bottom. So I'm gonna reset this, set the anchor point back to zero, 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 and keep going. So that's the box dimensions. And next we have the stroke size, which is very straightforward. You can adjust the size of the stroke of each face, set that back down. And the stroke color, again, pretty straightforward. That adjusts the color of the stroke. And next would be the colors of the faces. So the reason why these are colored the way they are is just so you can tell which side of the cube is front. So if I change the color of this front face to blue, that adjusts that. And we know this is the left side because this is the front. So if I adjust the left here to say that orange, burnt orange, that works there. And if I do the top, say sort of a magenta-y color, and there you go. Okay, and the next option we have to play with here, I'm gonna reset this once again, is wireframe mode. So what that does is simply turns the faces on and off, but leaves the outlines, the strokes. So again, if I play with the rotation parameters, you can see how that works. Pretty nifty. Next is the squash and stretch slider, which does absolutely nothing because we have to connect it. I'm gonna show you how. So in the vector box script tab over here, I'm gonna hit the squash and stretch tab and that opens up these buttons here. To set the squash, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it real flat. So I'm gonna go for 300 wide, 300 deep and 20 tall. There we go. I'm gonna hit set squash and now I'm going to adjust what I want this to look like stretched. So let's go 20 wide, 20 deep, and 500 tall. Hit set stretch, hit apply, and now you can see these are red now because these are connected to the squash and stretch slider. So I can interpolate between those two sets of dimensions that we created. And there you have it. And if you wanna remove that and get back to being able to adjust these manually, you just hit remove. It goes back to the last set of dimensions that we set, which was the stretch. And I'm just gonna reset these to 100, 100, 100. Next, I'm gonna show you the isometric camera. So if I go to the build tab, we have an isometric camera button. So before I click that, I'm just gonna show you how the cube currently moves in 3D space. So if I drag it along the X axis, you can see it moves left and right. Y, it moves up and down as expected. And the Z axis, it moves towards us or away from us. And that might be fine for what you want, but if you want to play with this box in an isometric perspective, then 
you might want the X plane to be here and the Z plane to be here. Another thing you'll note is that as the box moves away, you can see this face is starting to turn away from the camera. Same with the front face over there. So maybe you'd want the box to stay flat, like an isometric perspective. So if we want to do that, we hit the isometric camera button. And the isometric camera is, you know, it's from an isometric perspective, so the rotation of the cube doesn't make sense anymore. So if we go and highlight the box layer and hit zero out rotation, it resets so that it's facing the isometric camera appropriately. And now if I adjust the position of this box, the X axis moves this way and the Z axis moves this way. And it remains flat because the camera has a flattened perspective. So no matter how far the box goes, it still faces the camera in a flattened perspective. So now I'm just gonna undo all that. The next thing I'm gonna show you is the update boxes button. So this is important because of how the expressions work inside of here. So inside the box comp, I'm just gonna hit U twice here so I can see the expressions. All of these expressions you can see right here are tied to the comp main, which is the comp that this box layer is currently in, okay? So if I was to pre-compose this, I'm gonna move all attributes into the new composition and I'm gonna title this new comp. It breaks, right? So if we go in here and we look at our box layer, all of our settings are still here, right? The stroke color is supposed to be black, front is supposed to be red, white, everything else. None of that is working. And that's because if I go into here, it's still looking inside the main comp and the main comp doesn't have the box layer anymore. It has our new pre-comp, which doesn't have a vector box effect. So go back into our new comp here, highlight the box layer and hit the update boxes button. And there you go. All of our settings are back. And if I go into this layer, you can see it's now referencing the new comp. So anytime you move your box layer into another composition, you're gonna to wanna to hit that button so it knows to reference the box in that composition. So next I'm gonna show you the duplicate box button. So before I do that, let me show you what happens if I just duplicate this layer as I would normally in After Effects. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control D and I'm gonna move this box layer over here and I'm gonna rename this to new box. Now, if I change the color of this face to blue, nothing happens at all. And that's because if we go into the box pre-comp, you can see that they are referencing all of these expressions in here that control all of the colors and stroke color, stroke size, everything, reference a layer called box one. So if we go back out here, that is this original box that we made. So the new box is also referencing that. So if I was to change the color of box one's front face to blue, it changes both. So if you want a standalone box that, that we can change the colors of, then I'm gonna delete this box here, highlight the original box and hit duplicate box. Now, if I slide that over and it changed the color of the face to orange, you can see that that is now a standalone duplicate. The duplicate box button is handy because if you've already adjusted, let's say I make this 300, 300, 300, or 300, I'm gonna set the stroke size to 10, stroke color to white, maybe not white, sure, let's make it that. Right, so if I've already made all these changes to a box, and if I want another box that looks the same, you know, without having to make a default box and change all the settings to match the original one, then I hit the duplicate box button and it retains all of the properties from the original. And now I have control over changing those. Okay, so that's how the duplicate box button works. And that's pretty much it. So that's how the script works. And there are a couple things to mention. So there is one issue that I've, I've noticed and it shouldn't be a deal breaker because there's a way around it. But let me just show you what happens if I duplicate this box, I'm gonna move it up and I'm gonna make this original box down here. I'm gonna change the dimensions to something arbitrary. Sure. And I'm gonna parent the newest box that I made, this one up here. I'll turn these guides back on so we can see. I'll parent it to the original box. You can see what happens is it totally skews it and uh, makes it pretty much unusable. So, you know, what if I wanted to parent something and have it 
have one box follow another box. Well, that's kind of doesn't really work if the original box does not have dimensions of 100, 100, 100. I haven't figured out why this is occurring yet, so this is something I'm still working on, and hopefully I can bring out an update that does fix this. But in the meantime, I've found the best thing to do is just to make a null and parent with nulls. If I make a new null here, make it 3D, and parent both of these boxes to that null, now I can scale this original box to whatever I want, 300, 300, make this new box, I don't know, 50, 50, 50. And if I rotate that null, then you can see that's how I would achieve um, parenting cubes. Hopefully I can fix that issue. Um, but in the meantime, that's, that's the sort of workaround that you can use. The other issue I've noticed is in CS6, you'll notice that beside the name vector box up here, it says missing. As far as I can tell, that's purely cosmetic um, and it shouldn't affect the functionality of the script at all. So you should be fine. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys create with this tool and leave any questions, comments, feedback, whatever you guys have on AE scripts. So that's it. Take care and uh, see you later.